as good afternoon children good morning children today we are going to solve the exercises of the lesson frigid zones so in last class what we did we just uh, we just learned about the frigid zones what where is the location where is what are the peoples of this frigid zones are called so and even i gave you the notes of the frigid zones so today we are just going to solve out some of the exercise questions in your textbooks so today the first mean learning is here the first mean which will be learning here is uh the fill in the blanks so what the first one the first one which we are going to write is the answer for the first one the polar regions the polar regions experience experience dash months of continuous continuous day time and dash months of night continuous continuous night so when i ta taught you in this lesson the fill in the blanks what i have said you people is the climate when we just talked about the climate of frigid zones i just told you the polar regions can experience dash months of continuous day time and dash months of continuous night so the first half period that is the the polar regions experience first six months of the year will be having continuous day time it reaches uh, some amount of sunlight is resumed in this polar regions so that is why the first six months of uh, the first six months will be having the continuous day time as well as the next six months will be the night so the answer will be the six second one spectacular lights spectacular lights over the night sky over the night sky of the polar region polar region are called yeah i told you the light which is formed in the sky by solar winds it is formed in the sky the particles the the particles which are produced by solar winds are called as what yeah it is called as auroras in auroras we just came to know the two names of auroras the first aurora is called aurora borealis aurora borealis and in the north and aurora australis so in north we are just calling the aurora which is formed the auroras which are formed in the north are called as aurora borealis whereas in the south 
the aurora is also is called as aurora australis in the soft frigid zone where it is in antarctic lakes antarctica continent third one moses lichens are forming kind of vegetation kind of vegetation which is called dash so children i told you that the vegetation the vegetation which are formed either in north frigid zone or south frigid zone here the sand is fully covered by ice and snow so here the sand which is covered by sand and uh, the sand which is covered by snow and ice are called as permafrost it is fully covered by ice it, the vegetation is all it's not found so in this places in this antarctic as well as the arctic places what happens some of the small plants are grown like mosses and lichens so what happens when when here the mosses and lichens are growing it is a it is something which is a kind of vegetation so the plants which are growing or the the plants which are growing in a uh, frigid zone or uh, is called as which type which kind of vegetation is called in frigid zones yes it is called as tundra vegetation so it is called as tundra vegetation next one dash of scandinavia and dash of alaska are some tribes of the arctic region arctic region so children i told you some of the tribes who are living in frigid zones are called in different types of names but here what they have asked you they have asked you about the tribes who are living in scandinavia and alaska so the people or the tribe people who are living in scandinavia are called as laps n a p p yes laps and whereas in alaska the tribe people who are living in in alaska are called as aleuts a l u a l e u t s aleuts the last one the inhabitants the inhabitants of the arctic region arctic region are also known as so the inhabitants inhabitants means what is the meaning of inhabitants over here the inhabitants is nothing but the people who are living in the arctic region or the tribe people who are living in arctic region is also called as what the people mainly who are living in arctic regions are called as eskimos e s k i m o yes eskimos 
So these are the different type of tribe people who are living in Arctic regions. So the second main. Read the clues. Read the clues and guess the answers. So we are just doing from uh, first lesson the midst main. We are just going to read the clues and we are just going to guess the answers. The first one. Special kind of spare Eskimos using hunting. The children, I told you people that they are just using some of the they are just using some of the tools to kill animals or they are just going for hunting. Why they go for hunting? To protect themselves from cold and from cold by uh, removing, uh, by using their skin first for protect them from heat and their flesh for food. So, here they are just using a special kind of spear, which is used in hunting. What does the Eskimos use in hunting? Which type of spear is used here? It's nothing but it is a harpoon. H-A-R-P-O-O-N. Harpoon. Second one. Means of transport Means of transport Pulled by Reindeer So I told you uh, they are just using a Different type of, uh, or it is a different, uh, it is a different mode of transport which uh, they use here uh, by reindeer. I just showed you some picture also. The vehicle which is pulled by reindeer are called as what? It is called as sledges. S L E D G E S. Just. Third one, snow houses, snow houses of Eskimos. So I told you the build uh, here, the houses, here the houses are built with the ice blocks. In a circular form. So the such type of circular homes or which is built by uh, ice blocks in circular form is called as what? Anyone? Yes. It is called as igloo. I-G-L-L. -L, sorry. I-G-L-O-O. -O. Igloo. Next one, ice caps of the world, ice caps of the world, what, what a year, see your children. So now we are just considering this as the earth, so you are also full ice and you are also full ice, so these are the ice caps which are present all over the world. So, what here, what it is called? Ice caps of the world is also suggest the other name. 
what it is guess it is nothing but it is called as polar regions it is called as polar regions because it is present in the both poles that is the north pole and the south pole so the north pole is called as north polar region whereas the pole which is located or situated in south is south is called as south polar region the last one boats used for used for hunting and fishing so i told you here the people during summer some of the ice or the snow will be melted into water when during this water they just use some type of or the mode of transport which they sail in water so here yeah, some of the different kinds of boats are used for hunting and fishing so the boats which are located in polar regions or the frigid zones are called as what the boats are named as kayaks k a y a k s kayaks so kayaks is nothing but it is a different type of boat which is used for both hunting and fish so now the third main we are going to answer it is the right to or false so the first one in true or false is due to due to the due to the climate of the frigid zones frigid zones frigid zones these regions are thickly populated so children in the frigid zone uh, due to the climate of frigid zones this regions are thickly populated is whether it is true or false yes anyone can guess whether it is true or false yes it is false why it is false why it is a wrong statement can anyone guess yes because here there is very extreme cold winds cold storms are found in this frigid zones the cold storms or the cold winds which is blowing away is also called as blizzards due to very cold winds the people cannot live over here Uh, probably in antarctic region you cannot see the people living over there in arctic in some of the countries they are living in arctic region but in antarctic there is no people living over here whether it is thickly populated or uh, what no it is a false statement here that this regions are not thickly populated and it is uninhabited so hence this is a wrong statement so hence it is false next 
next one hibernation means hiding from hiding from the enemies as children i told you while, while uh, i was teaching this lesson i told you the meaning of hibernation hibernation means uh, it's hiding from the enemies to protect from the enemies you are just going uh, those animals are going to fight no it's a false statement it is a wrong statement so the meaning of hibernation is nothing but the animals will just sleep deep into the pit deep pit to prevent them from cold during winter the animals which sleep for a long time during summers are called as hibern is called hibernation so hence it is a wrong statement it is a false statement hibernation means hiding from the enemies is wrong statement hence it is false the frigid zones the frigid zones are frozen throughout the year throughout the year because of their because of their distance distance from the equator so children what is the question they have asked you here the question which they have asked you here is the frigid zones are frozen throughout the year because of the distance of because of the distance from the equator so you all know that the sun rays is fallen directly over the equator hence it is very hot it is hot wet and humid whereas in uh, polar means whereas in uh, north and south poles the rays of the sun uh, sun will be slanting way it is just it's uh, it's just going to receive the slanting rays because of slanting rays the sun rays won't fall directly over this poles when there is no sunlight falling on both of the poles what happens it just turns into ice it just becomes frozen so here the frigid zones are frozen throughout the year yes whereas in arctic circle and antarctic antarctica continent here it is always covered with ice and snow yes the statement which they have given here is correct so hence it is true so the fourth one antarctica receives high rainfall is it true children antarctica receives very heavy rainfall there any guesses anyone can say whether it is true or false what is your question is antarctica reserves receives high rainfall yes do you agree with this the antarctica receives the high rainfall anyone no it is a 
wrong statement so hence it is false why it is false because here the sunlight is not here the sun rays are not falling directly over this antarctic region it is just flow, uh, moving in a slanting way so that is why here it cannot receive any rainfall when the sun rays where where does the heavy rainfall occur or the high rainfall occur it just occurs in equatorial region whereas in antarctica that is in the south pole because of slanting sun rays it doesn't receive any rainfall so hence this is wrong statement and it is false fifth one penguins beach so penguins seeds and walruses have thick fur coat so children do you agree with this statement what they have given over here the question is nothing but the penguins and seeds the penguin seals and walruses have thick fur coat do you agree with this statement anyone yes you agree with this why do you agree with this statement because here the climatic conditions is extreme cold it has a cold climatic conditions to prevent from this cold or the strong cold winds here the animals or the birds like penguin seals and walruses have the thick fur why they have the thick fur coat because to prevent from cold winds and the blizzards which are flowing from the other places so hence this statement is correct and it is true so um, with this i am ending up the classes so that i think you have understood the exercises which i have explained you you just go through once and if any doubts you can just ask me and i'll be clarifying you in that coming wednesday so you have to bring your books for corrections on wednesday thank you children